No natural lifter has an impressive overhead press unless they have put in the time, put in the work, and learned a thing or two important along the way. What's up guys, Alec on Kiri here. And today we're gonna talk about the overhead press. And I'm gonna give you guys four tips to maximize your overhead press and break through any overhead press plateau. And I've had multiple requests for this one. So I figured that something purely informative like this video will be a nice cleanser from this past weekend's crazy drama with Coach Greg. But anyway, I am not the best overhead presser in the world, I'll admit that. I've strict pressed 200 pounds for a single, weighing about 160 pounds at the time. I have strict pressed 100 185 pounds for a triple off of pins and I have push pressed 255 pounds for a triple as well as 275 pounds for a single. So like I said I am not the best overhead presser in the world but I have put up some respectable weight overhead right and along the way I have learned a few things about the exercise and so today I want to share four quick tips with you guys to help you guys maximize your overhead press in the long run and build some healthy strong cannonball delts and just as a quick preface I'm going to be referring strictly to improving the strict overhead press in this video not the push press nothing with any leg drive involved just pure shoulder strength pure tricep strength pure upper body strength as well none of these tips that I'm gonna give you guys today will be technique pointers I'm not gonna teach you how to make your lift the most efficient that it can be and optimize your technique we can save that for another video if people are interested but in today's installment the advice here is mostly just going to be training tips right little tweaks that you can make to your training program and to how you're actually training the lift itself in order to help you break through that next inevitable plateau. So enough of that, let's get to it. And this is probably the most important tip that I can give you. You've got to up the frequency, man. Once you're past the early beginner stages, this lift is simply not going to budge if you're only training it one time per week. And that just is what it is. This lift can be very stubborn. And once the body has adapted to a given level of work, you'll be really hard pressed to expect the overhead press to continue to improve at that point. Honestly, the deltoids themselves actually seem to respond very well to large volumes of work and high frequencies of work. Think about high level swimmers, for example. They're known for having big, broad shoulders. And part of that is that they use those muscles very frequently every single time that they get in the pool, which if you're competing at a high level is probably very, very often and for relatively long periods of time. So their shoulders are doing a hell of a lot of work and they are responding to that work very, very well. So first and foremost, you got to up the frequency. If you're doing overhead pressing just one time per week, then do it twice instead. If you're already doing it twice, then add in another slot in, in another session somewhere so that you can do it three times per week. And this will also give you the opportunity to work some different variations as well. And this aspect is very important. I think it's one of the most underlooked aspects of improving pressing performance. Here, think about strongmen. They are obsessed with overhead pressing and they press a variety of different types of implements overhead, not just straight bars. And they're some of the best overhead pressers in the world. And so the stronger that you can get in a multitude of different variations, the stronger that you will ultimately be on the strict barbell overhead press. So try pressing off of pins for some dead stop work. Try using the Swiss bar to get in some neutral grip work or a strongman log would work for this as well. Pressing with a trap bar is another good option that I personally have been utilizing lately as well. And it's a little bit different from pressing a Swiss bar because the resistance with the trap bar starts out directly over top of the center of mass rather than out in front of it, like with the Swiss bar. So it's a little bit of a different stimulus there, which is good. And and along with that, you can obviously press dumbbells as well. Push presses are great. That's probably one of my favorite exercises of all time. And then seated overhead pressing can also be an option as well. But the point is there are plenty of options here and you should make use of as many of them as you can as you up the frequency, right? Don't just press a straight bar overhead all the time, but tinker with different variations instead and find which ones work best for you personally as an individual. And the increased frequency here will by default 
default bring with it an increase in total training volume and chances are your shoulders will respond very very well to the increased workload right and ultimately bigger stronger shoulders is what's really going to lead to a bigger overhead press in the long run so be sure to give this tip a shot first and foremost And along with the increased frequency, you're going to want to inject some variety into your rep ranges and your weight selections as well. And this is where tip number two comes into the picture because in my opinion, most people try to go too heavy on this exercise too often. You know, they can barely muscle up that first rep from a dead stop on their shoulders. And then since the bar is already overhead after that, they're able to get a stretch reflex in on all the remaining reps. And then they can essentially take what would actually be a two or a three rep max and turn it into an ugly and bouncy set of five reps. <laughs> and obviously heavy training has its place with this lift, just like it does with every other lift. But I do think that most people kind of miss out on the bigger picture here. You need to build your shoulders. You need to build big shoulders in order to build a big overhead press. And a big part of that is just getting in a lot of quality volume, accruing large amounts of work over a given period of time. But along with that, this lift in particular is also very delicate and it will stall very, very quickly if you're trying to go too heavy too often. So try lowering the weight here and try working in some higher rep ranges. Personally, I've been using a lot of sets of 12 to 15 reps recently on both straight bar presses as well as those trap bar presses that I just mentioned and it's going very very well so far in terms of my clients on average I would say that we probably spend most of our time in the six to eight rep range but these are high quality reps not like what you see from most people on social media and we also spend a fair bit of time in the eight to ten rep range as well along with some time in the ten plus range and honestly we probably spend the least amount of time overall doing five reps or less less per set. That has a time and a place, but that's where we spend the least amount of time. And this method works very well overall. It gives you the opportunity to consistently log a high number of very clean reps, consistently build momentum and build confidence, and really clean up your form and create a smooth, stable, and efficient motor pattern. So try lowering the weight and doing some high rep sets here. Trust me, you won't regret it. Now, tip number three is very, very important. It may seem trivial to some of you, but it makes a world of difference when you start pausing all of your reps on the shoulders. Now, I don't think you have to pause every single rep for every different variation, every different overhead pressing variation that you're doing. Because for example, I personally am not pausing my trap bar overhead presses right now, right? But I am pausing my straight bar overhead presses, no matter how many reps that I intend to do per set. So if you are doing a straight bar, strict overhead press, I do recommend pausing every single rep Again, regardless of how many reps you're doing in a set. And it doesn't have to be a crazy 10 minute pause on the shoulders or anything like that, but just stop for just a second or two, just a quick one to two count, and then explode back up to the top. And this removes most of the stretch reflex, the majority of the stretch reflex, and it makes your reps more consistent, right? That's very important. It makes your form more consistent, which leads to a more stable and more reliably efficient and repeatable motor pattern. And it also makes your rep performances more reliable and more accurate in terms of carryover to a bigger overhead press in general. Because you know, when you're ricocheting every single rep off the shoulders, you can start to press some very disproportionate percentages for impressive high rep performances. But that doesn't mean that those numbers are actually going to translate into anything impressive on a one rep max or anything like that, because the first rep always still has to be done without that stretch reflex. And as well, it doesn't even necessarily necessarily mean that you're actually even getting stronger because all the reps are not the same. You have no idea. You're not necessarily producing the same movement from, from one rep to the next. So you can't actually know if you're getting stronger or if you're just using more stretch reflex. So try pausing on the shoulders. Like I said, even a brief pause goes a very long way. And this will not only clean up your performances, but it will also help to keep you honest in the long run. 
And finally, tip number four, always remember to be patient. This lift in particular simply takes a long time to develop. If we look at the big four lifts, the squat, deadlift, bench press, and overhead press, the overhead press takes the longest to mature of all four of those lifts. It's the slowest to develop and the fastest to stall. And part of the reason for this is that people typically train the lift in a moronic fashion. Another part is that the shoulders and the triceps, the prime movers here, are both pretty small muscles, right? They start out quite under developed in most people and it takes a lot of time, consistency, and effort to add substantial meat onto them and that meat that needs to be added is ultimately what creates a strong overhead press. As well, it's just kind of the nature of the lift. The, the surest way to tell if a natural lifter knows what they're talking about is to look at their overhead press. Some people are natural born bench pressers, right? Others are natural born deadlifters and natural born squatters. And these people can often get away with crappy and subpar training practices and still lift impressive numbers in spite of that on those lifts, but no natural lifter has an impressive overhead press unless they have put in the time, put in the work, and learned a thing or two important along the way. So next time you see that guy pressing impressive numbers overhead, you should go pick his brain because chances are you're looking at a knowledgeable dude. But yeah, just remember to be patient here. As with all strength training, it's a long game. And just because this lift is moving slowly, doesn't mean that you're doing something wrong. It just takes time to mature. It's like a good bottle of wine, right? It's the nature of this exercise. So keep plugging away and eventually you'll get to where you're trying to go. And that about wraps it up for today, guys. I hope you found these four tips to be helpful. And I do hope that you're able to take something useful away from this video that helps you to maximize your overhead press and build your own pair of strong and healthy cannonball shoulders. And if you know someone who's struggling with their overhead press, then be sure to share this video with them as well. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, please remember to hit the like button before you go. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and definitely leave me some love in the comments down below, but don't do it for the algorithm. Just leave me some love because you love me. And if you're interested in online coaching or training programs, then be sure to visit my website, www.oncurieelitefitness.com for more details. Keep training hard and I will catch you guys next time.